My name is Kate Backhouse, I'm 25 years old. I suffer from cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a um, life-threatening genetic condition which mainly affects the lungs and it does affect other vital organs as well. This is my nebulizer. I have it um, four times a day and I just put this Ventolin in there and it helps to keep my airways open. So I'll just put that on now. It works. Growing up with cystic fibrosis, I was in the hospital a lot, and um, it's definitely made me into the person that I am. But it's very, um, uh, I can't do the things that I want to do. I can't um, have a boyfriend because I just don't have any energy to give somebody else. I can't go out like normal people, you know, and have and do things with my friends every day. And um, yeah, I just, I'm, yeah, I just can't get out there and you know have a life with people. Um, and that makes me quite frustrated. I get physio twice a day and it just helps me like cough up the mucus, the infection that I have in my lungs. So it just help, helps keep everything moving. Mm. So she, she does all my physio on um, my two sides and my front. When I was a baby and got diagnosed, they said I only lived until about seven. And then when I was seven, they said about 15. And when I was about 15, they just said about 25. And at the moment, like, without any lungs, I'd get another 12 months. So, yeah, it makes me feel really sad, but I mean, I'm sort of used to it, what I've grown up with, so it's, um, I, and I don't know any different. Hmm. So hopefully I'll just get some new lungs and I'll be fine. You are more likely to be on a waiting list to be a recipient than you are um, to actually be able to be an organ donor. And that is why it's so important for everyone to consider organ donation and to tell their family so that if in the unlikely event that it does happen, um, everybody knows what, what you would want. The donor numbers are decreasing around the world and there's several reasons for that and some of those reasons are very positive. Some of those reasons are the fact that medical technology is becoming you know, very experienced and fewer people are actually dying in intensive care units which has to be seen as a positive aspect. When I went to sign up for getting my licence there was a box you could tick that just said organ donor. Um, I ticked the box and assumed I'd be on the register after that but then was surprised to find out that it doesn't actually mean you're on the register. Um, you actually have to go through a whole different process to sign up as an organ donor and I don't really know how to do that. You used to always be able to register your intention to donate on your driver's licence but about five years ago the federal government introduced a very unique system in Australia called the Australian Organ Donor Register and they felt this was a wonderful opportunity for every Australian, not just someone who holds a driver's licence, to be able to record their intention to donate organs and tissues for transplantation after their death. There's only a, about 1% of the population who actually die in a position to, um, to become an organ donor. You have to die in a hospital, in an intensive care unit, on a ventilator and have died of brain death which means you've received some severe trauma to the head which has caused the brain to die. And this has happened while you've actually been on mechanical support in the ICU. If you have died, for example, um, in road trauma and you died in the accident, your heart would have stopped as well as your brain stopping and therefore there is no circulation and no blood supply to the organs. Once the organs don't receive that blood supply, they will also die and therefore they're not suitable to transplant. So only people who die under those special circumstances can donate their organs. A person who dies and becomes a donor, their death is sudden, it's not known, and it's something that happens on the day. I'd say it's pretty tough going in to see a family who are devastated um, about the loss of a loved one. Um, and I say it's tough because it is. You're walking into somebody else's heartache and then you have to sit and have a conversation with this family and find out what that person wanted. It's tough, but I can also say it's incredibly um, 
humbling every time I go in to see a family to know that they can actually think of other people at such a terrible time in their lives. They can actually confirm that person's wishes and say, yes, this is what they wanted and we know that they're going to help maybe up to 10 people. It was nearly eight years ago now that um, my 18-year-old daughter died. Um, her name was Alison. Uh, she just woke up one morning crying with the pain in her head and within 15 minutes of waking up she was unconscious. A couple of hours later she was, she'd had a, a CAT scan and they discovered that she'd had a massive uh, brain hemorrhage. And um, at that point we were told that she had very little chance of, of recovery. We'd gone to bed a normal, just like normal, normal family. Um, after a normal school day and um, then woke up the next morning and our whole, whole life had, had changed. Once she was pronounced, the um, donor coordinator was called and um, Tina arrived and started to talk to us about organ donation. There were lots of different forms that we had to go through. We had to um, give permission for each organ individually. Yeah, I look back now and think I should have said yes, but at the time I just could not bear the thought of anybody touching her eyes. And when we we had lots and lots of letters and, and cards from a lot of her school friends, and so many of them spoke about her beautiful blue eyes and... Um, and I think that's probably why I just couldn't, um, I just couldn't let, I just didn't want anyone to touch her eyes. It has given me comfort over the years, knowing that, that her death wasn't in vain. Um, and it's, it just, I know it was the right thing to do, and I don't know how it could have been any worse, but I feel that if, we hadn't been given the opportunity to, to donate her organs then yeah, somehow it, it just wouldn't have been right and she needed, yeah we needed some good to come out of just the most, the worst, worst time of my life. And all I've got is your hand Can you hear me now? Lord, can you hear me now? The most important thing <clears throat> to know about being on the donor registry list is to talk to your family because they've they're the ones that have to make the decision. Because even though you fill the form out, it doesn't mean to say that you have you will be a donor because if one family member says, no, I don't want my, my family member to be a donor, well, then they won't donate. So it's really important to um, discuss that with your family so that they know that that's your wishes. Just to let everyone, everyone know that, um, you know, there are people like me out, like out there that are waiting and, and there's a lot more to and I don't have the quality of life that everybody else has, so it'd be really good if everyone could be a donor.